For more resources, visit rymonline.org. The Local Youth Worker is a daily podcast that's centered on five questions each week. Ranging from the practical to the professional, we're looking for answers to the questions you're asking. Whether you're in full-time, part-time, or even volunteer youth ministry, this podcast is for you. Hey, everybody, and welcome back. Uh, We are talking with Tasha Chapman all this week uh, from Covenant Theological Seminary. Uh, We're talking about Christian education and specifically uh, just how we can uh, teach students in a more effective way. Uh, So yesterday we talked about uh, four things uh, that Tasha encouraged us on uh, teaching students. And today we're going to be kind of going to the other end of the spectrum and uh, looking at uh, three or more things that we should avoid. Uh, So Tasha, the the question today is what what are three of the biggest teaching mistakes uh, that we should avoid when teaching students? Yeah, great answer. Obviously, this is totally my opinion. Um, (laughs) You know, the things that give me the most, but the things that also help me the most, because I'm regularly teaching, not just in the classroom, but, you know, in the informal environments of mentor groups and small group Bible studies. And um, on Sunday mornings, I'm usually with the two-year-olds as well. (laughs) So if it doesn't work in all those places, I don't value it. Um, But the first one is very classic, not just to our culture, but there are many other cultures in the world that uh, have this major mistake. As soon as we think of uh, that there's got to be teaching involved, then we go to this default mode of to teach is to tell. Hmm. And therefore we lecture, therefore we communicate information, and that's what we do with most of our time and our energy, both in our preparation and in the actual event to teach us to tell, and that's actually a lie. I mean, it's just not true. Mm. The teaching learning process is very complicated for us humans. Um, we're complicated people and uh, creatures, and in God's good design, uh, many of us, most of us, do not learn well by just hearing something. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's very hard to engage well just from audio, um, which of course is the challenge for people listening to the podcast, um, even right now. Mm-hmm. Um, it's so easy to think, wow, that was a great sermon. And then if you ask me 10 minutes later what it was about, it can be very hard to remember. I mean, we'll actually have to work at it cognitively, even though we were paying attention. Mm-hmm. Um, so instead of to teach us to tell, if we could just break that and remind ourselves, okay, what I'm actually needing to do is gather people around the topic of focus and help us uncover it, help us solve problems with it, help us engage it and mix it up and take it into pieces and put it back together, right? So we're thinking action verbs instead. We're putting kind of, in a sense, the content of our teaching out in the middle uh, of the group and then having the group interact with it mm. uh, and to use more of our time thinking that way than, uh, in, than in lecture. It's not that there's no place for lecture, um, but just to get our focus off of this idea of transmitting information, um, especially in this day and age. We could be doing a lecture with our youth and they'll have 10 other possible opinions on that topic on their cell phone within two taps of a button, right? Mm, that's right, that's right. Because <laughs> they just Google it, um, <clears throat> and now they get the world's uh, variety of opinions <laughs> on the topic and expertises. So mm-hmm. yeah. we don't want to just transmit information uh, when we're physically together. And that's helpful. I mean, that's something I'm thinking of just you know, our, our large group meetings uh, on a Wednesday night. I knew that typically... When I saw the students, uh, they had been sitting in a classroom all day long. Uh, they had been right. receiving information, hearing information, and now it's you know seven o'clock at night, and they're going to start listening to some more information. Um, so of course you'd see you know the students kind of glazed over a little bit and say you know okay we need to interact a little bit more we need to ask some questions and um, yeah that, that's some some helpful advice there to to just uh, be thinking that to teach is not just to tell uh, that there is interaction that needs to be involved there right and so to spend more time thinking what's the interaction um, going to be mm-hmm. um, how do I get other people's mouths open because they're going to remember and learn way more about what they say. Um, and talk to even each other than about what I say. Mm-hmm. It was a simple way to think of it, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's my first one. Um, the second one um, we spoke about in the previous podcast, so I'll just remind you know, listeners that it was just that lack of clear learning objective as a technical term, but that lack of clear goal 
for that specific event. Um, that sense of, boy, at the end of this event, um, whatever it is, um, I hope that the learners will have what? How would we have changed in how we think, how we feel, what we value, what we're doing um, with our bodies, our skills, um, just that lack of clear goal that's an actual challenge for the group to take on. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Because to learn means to be challenged. Um, it, it means to be wrong in a sense. Um, and so w having a clear sense of, hey, what's the challenge that's that either my learners are bringing to the pizza party tonight or that I'm I'm setting up and helping us, you know, work on tonight at mm -hmm. the pizza party. What's what's the challenge? Yeah, yeah, that's the second one. And I know that can go against I mean, some of the kind of stereotypes you hear of youth ministry are just people right. shooting from the hip and not really planning a whole lot. I do think um, there's some truth to that. But then it seems like I've been encouraged to see a lot of just intentional youth ministries. And a lot of that is just the, the literature that's being, you know, published uh, lately of people really giving a lot of th thought to youth ministry. And so this is just an important thing to emphasize that, um, you know, to, to think through these objectives uh, practically, you know, each week and even, you know, it would probably be helpful to state those at the beginning of the lesson of, hey, st hey students, here, here's what we're hoping to accomplish tonight. Right, here's, here's what I want you to walk away with. Then you state them and then afterwards, you know, reiterate them. Uh, so that way they can, instead of, okay, what would y'all talk about tonight? And you're trying to search for an answer. Hopefully they'll have something a little bit more tangible uh, that they can relay. So that's some some good advice. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, you know, it's easy to think, hey, our kids are tired, they're overworked, they're stressed in this performance culture. Hey, we really just need to have fun. And my objective is that we'll have fun. Uh, but even there, I want to push back and I want to say, wait a minute, how is fun moving towards Christ? Hmm. How is that helping them move towards maturity in Christ? And it can be, but we have to think about it carefully. You know, a pizza party can be just as, as hurtful to a teenager to attend, right? Because what if someone gives them the cold shoulder or looks at them funny or they don't feel welcome or, you know, right? there's so many social, again, there's social challenges that can come into that event. Um, again, if, if we're just thinking, oh, everyone's going to show up and therefore they'll have fun and somehow that's growth. Um, yeah, then, then we're off. So that's um, one of those big mistakes. And adults make it too. It's not just a thing in teen ministry. Um, and that's that happens, a, clear challenges. And as you're saying that, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, to just the, then using the, the pizza party example, um, you know, there are all sorts of personalities in a youth group. And so you think of extroverted people, introverted people. Um, you know, a party like that might be just terrifying for the introverted person. Um, and so trying to even think of it in that way, okay, how could this be a fun night for someone who is a little more introverted and might be intimidated coming here tonight? So trying to, you know, think about it through those two perspectives uh, could be helpful Absolutely. and make, make the night more fruitful. Right, because just having a small, you know, in tonight, I, we're all going to work on just hospitality. What is it to help people feel welcome? And so maybe one of the games, games, you know, quotation marks at the pizza party is um, people serving each other pizza and finding out what drink they want and making drinks for each other and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, to give it some structure and to deal with the challenge that, in a sense, our learners are actually walking in the door with. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Uh -huh. So, yeah, my third one um, that I want to name is, is one that really impacts those of us who are leading um, any event where we know some teaching learning is supposed to go on or we feel the expectation of that is that we can become very fearful mm. that we have to have all the answers. Mm. Um, and so just really want to, again, I think our culture is, um, you know, it's very performance oriented. It's very perfectionistic. And we think the person up front somehow has to be a genius, has to wow us, has to entertain us, mm -hmm. uh, all of the above, has to have their hair perfect. You know, we're a visual <laughs> culture now. So the weight of expectation on us when we're in charge of said pizza party um, can feel enormous. And that's why I say, you know what? To be a brilliant teacher, you don't need all the answers. Mm -hmm. You just need to invite people to explore the questions with you. And so I actually have a phrase I use in class which just says, you know, don't be the teacher, be the chief learner hmm. in the room. In other words, you're diving into learning just as well. You're eager to participate, engage in the different methods and the different things that the group is doing to learn more. And it's not going to throw you when people have questions that you don't know. You say, oh, great question. Okay, how can we go about finding the answer to that? 
Yeah. Um, and then not to feel like you have to be the expert, especially for us in Bible studies. We think, wow, if I'm leading, I have to be the Bible answer person. Mm -hmm. I have to know it all. And we do. We'll even answer questions we shouldn't be answering. <laughs> uh, if we could just take that burden off and that expectation and realize, actually, everybody will learn better if I'm the chief learner in the room. Mm -hmm. And I bring my own enthusiasm for the topic, my own questions to the topic. Um, and then, you know, some good resources and ideas for all of us. Um, we can really get the fear out of it for ourselves, and that helps everybody feel more comfortable mm -hmm. to be that, wrong, to try. You know, mm -hmm. that, that's really good, and that really goes back to what you you, you were saying yesterday, and really just uh, you know encouraging people and welcoming people. You know, having an environment where people feel like they can you know come and ask questions and, and learn when they hear, okay, this this guy this this girl doesn't have it all figured out. Um, that that, right. that does kind of create that welcoming environment and it does hopefully encourage the students to ask more questions and feel free to ask those questions as well right absolutely they really need um they need that camaraderie of hey this person's human too mm -hmm. and wow they totally don't know the answer to this question i asked this is great i stumped them and we're all gonna go see if we can figure it out this week and come back next week and um yeah that psychological safe place mm -hmm. uh, to be limited to be wrong to try and fail um, we set that up as leaders. We need to model that. And, of course, that's modeling um, the sanctification in our own lives. Mm -hmm. uh, not that we're going to share all the dirt on the sins we're struggling with, but we're certainly going to, again, model that God's working on us, too. And uh, as a teacher used to say, you know, back in the 70s, uh, I don't know if it's been around since then, but, you know, be patient with me. God isn't done with me yet. You know, mm -hmm. being the chief learner. Um, that's part of our sanctification process. And um, Paul, the Apostle Paul, certainly modeled that well for mm -hmm. us. Um, yeah. not, not to mention the, the warnings of Scripture that teachers will be judged more harshly. <laughs> Absolutely. So to, to be cautious before we just say an answer that we're not 100% sure is, is correct. Um, right. So. Better to be humble and say, woo, that's hard. Let's work on that. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah, well, that, that's, that's very helpful, Tasha. Anything you want to add to any of that? No, that's that's probably my top three today. Right. <laughs> Ask me tomorrow, they'll be a different set. <laughs> All right, well, thanks again, Tasha.